bring this up and let's look at this. So this is a, a study that was published in JAMA Cardiology. Now, this study was just in women, uh, but I think this is absolutely applicable to every human being on the planet. And so Dr. Ovedi Abadi is saying, we, what, we're trying, what you're trying to do is prevent a heart attack. You're trying to prevent heart failure. You're trying to prevent early death. That's what we're trying to, all of us, everybody in the world, if you care about your life and your health, then you, you want to minimize the things that are going to cause you to die of a heart attack or die of anything else. And so when you crunch the numbers from that JAMA cardiology study, then what we're looking at is hazard ratios. That means the risk of something bad happening because that the person has the following thing. And I've ranked these. These are the top 10 hazard ratios that came out of that very large study. And so if anybody out there is interested in not having a heart attack, not having heart disease, then you need to focus on the biggest pieces of the pie first and fix that and then focus on the next biggest. Or you could just do what Dr. Ovadi and I do and we, we, we fixed our diet. And so we're, we're working on all of these at the same exact time because would you, would, what's your opinion on this, Doc? Do you think that every single piece of pie in the top 10 here that causes uh, coronary heart disease the, what 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 part does diet play? Yeah, exactly. You know, the the only two slivers uh, on that piece of pie that aren't affected by the food you're eating is smoking uh, and inactivity. You know, although inactivity also you know usually tracks with uh, not eating well. But you know, besides that, all of these other factors do get influenced by insulin resistance and by the food that we are eating. And uh, the reality is, is that none of the factors on this graph uh, are actually influenced by statins. And people will say, oh, well, I see LDL there. Uh, but what you see there is actually small, dense LDL particles. And it turns out that statins really don't have much of an effect on small, dense LDL. They lower right. LDL overall, but they disproportionately lower large fluffy LDL, and they can actually make the small dense LDL uh, more of a problem. Uh, but insulin resistance is what uh, causes LDL particles to shift towards the smaller size and become damaged and oxidized. And then, you know, everything else we see on this list is certainly related to insulin resistance. Uh, so that is the discussion that I that is the way that I have tried to shift the discussion around heart disease. Um, you know, it, it's, it's not, we, we can forget about the statin issue for a minute. We could, even if we wanted to accept, okay, statins are as great as they say they are, and they do everything that they say that they do, and all the published studies are, are correct, um, which obviously it's not. But if we accept that, um, we still can't ignore this graph, that it is only attract it is only addressing a very small part of the risk pot of the risk puzzle and insulin resistance is the vast majority of the risk puzzle so why aren't we addressing insulin resistance when we are talking about heart disease absolutely and when you see this 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 information graphed like this it, it immediately becomes a huge deal that the tough school of nutrition and public policy that they're recommending for both you and your children that you eat things like Lucky Charms and Reese's Puffs cereal and even cornflakes because all of those spike your blood sugar, spike your insulin, are in, to at least some degree inflammatory in nature and are also void of many of the nutrients, the vitamins and minerals, amino acids and fatty acids that your body needs. Now, Dr. Ovedi and I both are eating a diet that will minimize the risk of every single one of these top 10 risk factors. And let's just talk, I, I would love to know what a cardiothoracic surgeon eats. I think that'd be good relevant information. Tell us about your diet, Dr. Ovadia, and, and why you're eating that diet to minimize all of these risks. Yeah, sure thing. So, you know, my diet is a carnivore diet. Um, you know, it is uh, based in animal eating, in eating animal protein, uh, first and foremost, and the vast majority of what I eat is animal protein. 
a uh, typical day like yesterday, um, you know, around noontime or so, uh, or even a little later than that, when I got out of the operating room, I had a, a uh, it was a flank steak yesterday, but oftentimes it will be, uh, you know, a steak of some sort. And probably about five hours later or so, I had a, a pound of ground beef with a couple of duck eggs uh, scrambled into it. And that's what I eat in a typical day. And I do that exactly because of what you said, you know, avoiding insulin resistance, avoiding all of these things. Um, I've been uh, I've been wearing a continuous glucose monitor the last few weeks, uh, which I do on an occasional basis. And it my glucose just stays a nice flat line pretty much all day long, you know, within about a 10 point range. It, it will vary uh, when I eat that way. And so it is addressing, you know, all of the things on this list uh, by doing so. Absolutely. And I think when you see this list, because type 2 diabetes, most people know what that is. That's chronically high blood sugar. Uh, metabolic syndrome is chronically high triglycerides, blood pressure, blood sugar, and then uh, a waist to height ratio that's, that's you're too fat in the middle, basically. Yeah. Hypertension is high blood pressure. Obesity, every single one of these things is going to respond to having a lower average blood sugar. And, and this is one of the reasons that, that we all recommend you wear a CGM. Even if you haven't been diagnosed with prediabetes, type 2 diabetes, type 1 diabetes, MODY, or LADA, you need to wear a CGM for a few weeks so that you can figure out which foods really spike your blood sugar and which foods don't really spike your blood sugar. And I, th I, th I think probably the official recommendation from Tufts University would be, ah, you don't need a CGM because if you wear a CGM and you eat the foods they recommend, you're going to see very quickly that those foods spike your blood sugar off the chart.